I'm Ryan F9, and these are the safest buckets that I know of. First up is the Showy Quest. Right off the bat, we have a simple full-face motorcycle helmet. There's maximum coverage here. There's no flip-up chin bar that's gonna weaken the structural integrity. There's no angular sun peak that could catch on the ground and impart some kind of torque to my neck. So that's good. If we're talking about plain old impact protection, then this shell is gonna be exceptionally safe too. I mean, unlike polycarbonate buckets are gonna crack on impact, this is a composite fiberglass shell, and so it's gonna crackle. Um, and so there's gonna be tiny fractures spreading across a large surface area of the helmet, dispersing that impact, absorbing a lot of the force in the shell itself before the EPS foam underneath even comes into play. So fiberglass is good, but even better is that Shoei wove some organic fibers into the mix. These natural fibers are extremely elastic, and that's gonna bring the crackling effect to a whole new level. So they wanna bend and stretch and hold on to one another, spreading the crackle across more and more surface area of the helmet, rather than letting anything puncture through. So it's a very safe shell. That's probably why the Shoei Quest scored a perfect five out of five on the UK's sharp safety ratings. There are other things that make this helmet safe too. The visor is gonna be anti-scratch, anti-fog, and 99.9% .9 protective from UV rays. So my eyesight is in good hand. The visor does lock down as well. And I really like that because face shields do have a tendency to pop open in a slide. Now my main worry with the Shoei Quest is gonna be its size and weight. I mean, it's 1.65 kilograms for a size large. It's not really obese, but even still, every gram in a crash comes as more force that can be transmitted onto my neck. Another thing with this helmet is it's not the slimmest helmet out there. The surface of the shell actually sits pretty far away from the surface of my head. And that means that the rotational torque this helmet could impart on my neck if it were to catch on something in a crash is actually fairly high. But even still, this is a top-notch motorcycle helmet when it comes to safety. It is a round head shape, by the way, which you should really be mindful of. Fitment is one of the most important things to choosing a safe motorcycle helmet, so there's not really any point in cramming an oval noggin into this round showy. I mean, that would just negate most of its safety benefits. I should also mention this was one of my top five quietest motorcycle helmets, if you care about that kind of thing. Now, we all know the old adage, right? $50 helmet for a $50 head. Well, it's kind of ironic because only $50 heads would believe something like that. Price does not equal safety when it comes to motorcycle helmets. I know some thousand dollar buckets that are almost useless in a crash. And I know some cheap helmets that'll protect like a pro. Case in point, HACIS 17. By all accounts, this is a budget helmet. I mean, just over $200 gets me this comfortable, fairly well-ventilated, fairly quiet lid, and it's gonna have a drop-down sun visor and a quick-release pinlock-ready face shield, too. So it's a cheap helmet, and yet the IS-17 scores a perfect five out of five on the sharp safety ratings. Plus, the IS-17 is 50 grams lighter than that showy quest we just saw, so it's a bit safer for your neck. Now, I mean no disrespect to showy here, too, because the IS-17 also trumps a bunch of AGVs, Arise, and Schuberts when it comes to safety. Now, the face shield on the HJC does lock down, and you know that I really like that. And the other thing is that there is gonna be some safety benefit to this drop-down sun visor. I mean, being able to see, somewhat important when piloting a motorcycle. I do just wish the HJC had given us a darker tint here, though, because this is like a light smoke at best. And the other thing is that, those of you who watch my other videos will know, I really hate this retraction mechanism. I mean, long story short, this doesn't work as soon as the spring gets dusty or worn out. The IS-17 is an intermediate head shape, and you're gonna have to have an intermediate noggin if you're gonna get the most out of those safety features. And I should probably mention that this helmet is only DOT rated, but that doesn't really put out any doubts in my mind. I mean, Snell and EC stickers are certainly meaningful, but they're not the whole story. Now, the first two helmets we've seen have been pretty good general purpose full faces, but what if I want something sportier? Then I'll take AGV's Corsa as my first choice for a safe sport helmet. Yes, it achieves a five out of five safety rating from Sharp, and yes, it's Pista GP older brother does too. I chose the Corsa because it's about $700 cheaper than the GP. Now the GP uses a carbon fiber shell to shave a few grams. That's gonna be the main difference because this one is a composite fiber. But to be honest, there isn't really any safety difference between the two and at 1,570 grams, the Corsa is plenty light to begin with. Another thing I really like is that this one actually has closable ventilation ducts, whereas the GP doesn't. And that's very nice because I don't spend every waking minute at the track. Now, in my opinion, getting a precise fit is just as important as choosing a safe motorcycle helmet. And the Corsa is gonna make that really easy because this guy comes in seven different sizes, four different shell constructions, which really optimizes the size relationship between my specific head, the padding of the helmet, and then the shell of the helmet. AGV even gives us two different mediums, medium small and medium large, to better cater to those most common head sizes. And if that weren't enough, I also get 
some padding customization options in the box. By the way, have a look at the locking mechanism on the visor here. I mean, it's like a metal deadbolt screwed directly into the face shield. I don't think I've ever seen one so sturdy. The Corsa is a killer track day helmet. I mean, one look at this massive rear spoiler is gonna tell you that it's meant to be ridden like this. We also know that the Corsa steals its shell shape, its aerodynamics, and its ventilation from the more racish older brother. And the Pista GP, in turn, was designed in conjunction with the Doctor. So what I'm saying is, this Corsa actually has some of Valentino Rossi's DNA. My only complaint with the Corsa is that it's not Snell certified. I mean, that's no comment on its safety level, mind you. And Snell and the European certifications just have slightly different ideas on what makes a helmet safe. And so AGV probably built the Corsa to ace the European standards, and they probably didn't even bother sending it to Snell. So I have no problem with that at all, but some track day officials, eh, they might still balk at the DOT sticker. Now, I chose this last helmet to prove a point. It's a $200 Scorpion EXO R410, and it has two massive safety features that are often overlooked. Obvious one first, high-vis colorway. I'm always amazed how people will spend so many hours and dollars trying to find out that safest possible motorcycle helmet, and then they'll get it in black. I mean, yeah, black is cool, but if safety is your primary concern, then, I mean, this neon colorway probably does more than all the fancy fibers and safety ratings of your black helmet. Let me put it this way. In most motorcycle crashes, the difference between a three-star safety helmet and a top-of-the-line five-star safety helmet is not actually gonna affect how you walk away. It's only a certain percentage of accidents where the head trauma is within a very specific range that you actually see the benefit of that five-star helmet. On the other hand, a neon helmet decreases your chances of getting into all accidents in the first place. That's why I choose to ride in my white variant. Neon is just a tad too lame for my personal vanity, but white helmets, I can handle. The main thing is that it's reflective, it's bright, and it doesn't blend into the road. The other safety feature that this helmet displays, which is often overlooked, is emergency quick-release cheek padding. Now, heaven forbid we do get into an accident where we have a neck injury, we really don't want the paramedics having to yank and pull on the helmet to get it off. Now, instead, they can grab these red tabs here. It quickly removes the cheek pads on either side, and then they'll be able to take the helmet off without imparting too much force onto our neck. So those are the points I wanted to make with the EXO R410. Now, Sharp gave it a 4 out of 5 star safety rating, by the way, but between the neon colorway and the emergency quick-release cheek pads, I'd actually feel safest in this helmet out of all the ones on my list. Now it does have a Snell and DOT safety rating. It weighs 1,670 grams, has a locking face shield, and it's an intermediate head shape. That's it for my safest motorcycle helmets. Please feel free to disagree with me in the comments below, and thank you very much for watching.